your neighbor and say, oh, I'm glad you're in church today. Turn to the other side and say, oh, I still didn't get them two dollars. <laughs> that money just going to come. All right. How many are ready for what God is doing? How many are ready for what God is doing in your life? You know, today I, I, I have a message where in the book of James, and I need to break down what, what's happening for many of you. We are in a spiritual warfare. You don't have to acknowledge it. <laughs> it's still going to happen. You, you may not see what's behind your trouble, but if that don't matter, that, that's not going to change whether that trouble's coming. But when you know what you have on the inside of you, that it is greater than he that is on the outside of you, you can rejoice in the midst of your storm. You don't have to be afraid or have to say, God, help me, because he's already there to do it. I, I want us to go first to the book of James, and we're going to read from James chapter 1. And starting at verse 1, and we're going to just read down from there. It says, this is the letter from James. James was the brother of Jesus. He was the next in line after Jesus. He was actually the blood brother of the marriage between Mary and Joseph. Jesus was the offspring between Mary and the Holy Ghost. So James didn't believe in Jesus, and, and most of his life ridiculed him until the resurrection. And he saw him face to face, saw him that this was the one I was making it hard for him to live. See, sometimes people will walk into your life, and you wonder why they're making it hard for you to just exist. But the real reason isn't because uh, they're trying to hurt you. They don't know who you are. If they knew what destiny was in your life, they wouldn't bother you. They would beg from you. Hello, somebody. They wouldn't try to stop you. They're trying to hitch a ride with you if they only knew. Look at your neighbor and say, if they only knew. I'm telling you, you've got so much potential on the inside of you that the devil will stir it up and make it look like you're at fault just because you got a destiny that people don't understand. Jesus said, Jesus was at the cross and there was nobody with him. All the disciples had run away. He was all by himself between two thieves. And yet, if they only knew. <laughs> a couple of years ago, I had a, I shared with the church before that I had a, a, a baseball team. And I just wanted to try my hand at, at playing baseball. Uh, and, and wanted to coach. So I had gone into the coaching, you know, where you pick, pick your players, and they were all sitting there smiling. You know, they, they look like baseball coaches. You know what I mean? They chewing the stuff, and, and I'm like, you know, I'm like, that's nasty. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm thinking what my mama would say, you know? And, and, and they got the hats, and they looking all, and they got the books and the checkbooks, and, 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 and they say, well, you know, um, it's funny, you're, you're here now, but um, we've picked all the kids, so you can have what's left. And I'm like, uh, some doesn't feel right, but uh, okay. And then they started telling me who I had. I had all the ones nobody wanted. I had all, see, this was a boys' league, and they let girls play, so they, they gave me the girls. They 
gave me the slowest ones. They gave me the kids with autism. But if they only... <laughs> so, with my team, first thing you do is everyone had a first name, and I can't remember people's names. So I started naming them what I wanted them to be. <laughs> he couldn't catch. I was like, oh, you Mr. Mitt. Come on, baby. You can catch. You, you're Sir Catch-A-Lot. That's what your name is. Sir Catch-A-Lot. My son would strike out, and he was playing on my league. I say, I'm going to call you Thunder. Because when you hit that ball, it sounds like thunder. And you're going to knock it into the outside. And then when we had this kid on our team who was like fastest kid in the world. And I said, I don't know what your name is, but you're lightning. And I said, when you run, it's like lightning. And they're like, yeah, I'm lightning. I'm lightning. Let me say this to you. Sometimes you can't listen to nobody else give you a name. You got to listen to what God said over your life. Because everybody else will count you out. Right now, you may count yourself out. But I'm the coach right now. I want you to listen to me. You have a name that people don't even know. And if they knew who you were. So, so there was one kid, he was autistic. And uh, this dude would, would, would watch baseball. And he would watch it, and he'd get all the uniforms. I mean, the right colors. He had it all together, the hat. He had the baseball, the gloves. And, and when he'd get up to the plate, he'd do exactly what they would do. He'd be sitting there just like this. Now, I knew that boy couldn't even hit that ball. And I'm saying, he can't hit the ball, but you know what? I said, okay, here's what your name is. You made your league. You major league, baby. You major league. So all of a sudden, I'm just teaching the kids the basics, and we, I, I, I loved on them. I, it, no matter what the other people, we would go play, and you had parents cussing at their kids and yelling at their kids and, and saying names to their kids. But on my field, you couldn't yell at a kid. You had to encourage that kid. You say, no, you can do it. You can have it. Listen, you want a, you, you a home run? Go do it right now. And they go out there, and I encourage them and encourage them until we won the first game. And then the second game. Then we went on to the third game and won it. Now they're getting a little testy. Parents come out, something wrong, he's cheating, he's cheating. We know who these kids are. That's Major League, baby. <laughs> Look at your neighbor and say, you Major League. Now, see, 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 all they saw was a kid who was autistic, who, who liked to go through the motions but couldn't do nothing. And every time he came up to bat, they said, bring it in, bring it in. It's major league, bring it in, bring it in. And because they knew he would strike out. Well, we got through the season. Turns out we are in second place. We had to play this team, to go to the playoffs. And I'll never forget, we had bases loaded. Okay, bases loaded. Lightning was on third base. Sir Ketchalot was on second base. Thunder was on first base. And the next one up <laughs> bottom of the ninth, we had two strikes, and Major League was up. Now, you know, it's like at that moment, you've got to ask the hard question. I know I could swap it out because I know he's not good at hitting the ball. At least that's what people say. Or I can trust God with what he gave me. Y'all missed that. You better trust God with what he gave you. Woo! 
You keep looking over the fence saying the grass is greener on the other side, but you don't know all the fertilizer. You got to step in. You don't understand what they got to go through and what they have to suffer. And, and, and it's before you start picking what looks right, pick God's, what he gave you. He, you don't have to go out for outside. When you were born in this earth, inside of you, he put everything you need for you to be successful. This here, right here. So instead of looking at somebody else, look inside yourself and say, God, what is in my hands? What can I do for you? How can you use me? God, I know how I feel, but God, you're God, and you made the earth in seven days. You spit the stars in the atmosphere. You caused the waters to rise and the dirt to a form. You caused the sun to ignite and shine off that moon. And at night, I can look up and see your glory. So if you could do that, that you got to trust that God made you right most of the times the issue isn't what God did it is we don't know what we have in us we overlook our lives because all we see is the mistakes that we make we could tell you what's wrong with us, but how many of you could tell yourself what's good about you? When was the last time you looked in the mirror and said, you know what? You a bad joker. I mean, they wonder if I'm crazy in my house because I go in my mirror, I'm like, boy, you, mm -mm, boy, ooh, you look good, baby. I'm like, mm, how do you eat? Mm, yeah, I, mm, I can see it. I can see it, and, and I talk to myself and say, you know what, I will succeed. I'm going to make this thing. Why? Because he is with me even to the ends of the world, and what he started, he will, if they only, because let me say something to you. You will, in this world, suffer tribulation. You will struggle. You will have pressure and stress, and you will say to yourself at times, you know what? It's like I just get out of something, and now I'm falling into something else. God, give me a break. And all God says, I'm going to break you off a part of that Kit Kat bar. That's all you're going to get. <laughs> you better... You better just be satisfied. And, and, and you're saying, God, why? Why? Why is this happening? And God says, listen, I got to pressurize you. I got I to gotta, I gotta get to the point where you realize all them people aren't going to choose you. When he went after a king, he didn't go after David's brothers. He went after David, who was out in the field. He had to be a nobody before he became a somebody. And what God does, he breaks down our identity we build up on what we think we should be. And then when we get to the point where we're like, God, I don't know who I am. He says, exactly. Now let me tell you who you are. Because if they only knew. So Major League, it's the bottom of the ninth. Three, we had, it, it, it was two outs. He had three balls, two strikes. What are you going to do? I can, I can, if I would have just took it into my own hands, I could have put somebody else in that place. And I would have won the game. But, but I knew God. Had something in Major League. People were like, Coach, change him out. No. No, that's not what it's about. It's about these kids. And so Major League got up. He doesn't speak. He just moves. Got up to that bat, you know, kicked the dirt. I don't know what he was kicking. Kicked the dirt. Base is loaded now. 
And he's sitting down there, and, everybody, and the coach is going, bring him in. He, ain't, he don't hit hard. Bring him in. Bring him in. And everyone's laughing. Major League gets down. Gets that ball. And that ball came straight at Major League. And Major League went. And that ball went. And the whole, the whole baseball field was quiet, like. And I'm like, run! <laughs> so the other team's bouncing around. They're throwing the ball. They threw it to the outside, out to the outfield. They dropped the ball. All of a sudden, one came running in, and then another came running in, and then another one came running. They're tossing the ball everywhere because nobody was ready for major. <laughs> Come on. See, it may be the bottom of the ninth. It looks like you're out. But if God is on my side, you better get ready, baby, because I'm major league. It may look like it's over, but if you can just trust God, Whoa, listen, the storm is right there. I like it. Let the water hit me in the face. Yes, it is right there. When they said the hurricane coming, we're going to close church. What? The church can move the hurricane. <laughs> Ain't that you? She called, then you called me and said people were asking. Phone went quiet for a long time. She's like, I just, I was just asking because I just quiet. Because I know the power I have. I know like you, I'm major league, baby. I know, man, I look like much on the outside. But you don't know me. You don't know me, man. Look at your name and say, you don't know me. Now you got to say it like you're from Miami. You don't know me. And I remember Major League was the last one. We were tied. Major League was still running the bases. He like, he doing the TV thing. And I'm like, Major League, come on. Come on, everybody screaming, Major League. He's like, <laughs> Slid in the second. Why you sliding? <laughs> Boy, get up, get up. See, when you got God on your side and you confident, you could just slide into things. Everybody else stressing. You just slide into work. Hey, God bless you. How's the day going? Amen. God bless you. All hell breaking loose all around you. And you're like, slide on in. Because I know I'm covered. Hello, somebody. I know he going to work it out. I know he didn't bring me this far. That's the power of a person who confesses Christ in their life. You don't know who you are yet, so don't give up on the game. You still on second base. So Major Lee run over to third base. They threw the third. The ball went way over his head. I'm like, run home. Major Lee started walking. And you know, I'm sitting there going, you know, you're about to kill me, man. You about to... Anybody been stressing because you, you need God to move and God walking? Right? Oh, come on. Y'all know what I'm talking about. You need a bill paid. You need God to come through like yesterday and God just doing. They're like, come on. The bill collector's here. Come on, God. And he, God, God already know he made you league. You know what I'm saying? I started this thing. You already got three already in. If I could do it with thunder, if I can do it with lightning, if I can do it with catch a lot, then you better just wait on major league, baby.
And we're still in the word. And Major Lee cut up to the, I mean, two feet from home plate. And he just dusted his pants off and dived in. <laughs> really? Really? Major League, really? But Major League was in his own world. Nothing was impossible for Major League. When he bunted that ball, nobody was ready for him. Listen to me now. When you trust God and you go into that secret place and tribulation is bumping you all around and you don't know what to do, I mean, you're at, your la you're, you're, I mean, you're at the end of your ropes and somebody snipped it. you at your on your last nerve and it took a vacation. And you're like, God, I need you. See, see, that's when God moves the best. You know, they say, you know, he's never late, but he's always on time. I don't believe that. I believe there ain't no time with him. You either ask him to do it or not. And when he does it, it's just when he does it. You didn't give him a timeline, so let him be God. And when you realize in your life, the Bible says you will suffer tribulation. But sometimes you need to know that God has made you to round the basis because he's going to bring you home. I need you to drop your fears. I, I need everybody to stand up. I need you to put your hands in the air. This is the police. I'm not coming in. I'm not coming in. You got to come out. You didn't hear what I said. I'm a man of authority. I don't have to come into your mess. I'm telling you, you got enough power to come out of your own mess. Don't, oh, I say put your hands down. I said come out with your hands in the air. Make a step. Let me see you step forward. Don't kick nobody. I need you to drop your weapons now. Drop your fear. Drop your words. Drop your murmuring. Drop your complaining. Drop your fear. Just let it. Just toss it on because it will get you killed. You think you're going to survive? No, not in the spiritual realm. If you holding on to a gun thinking that's going to save you, it might get you shot. Drop your weapons. Put your hands down. You can't come to God with closed fists. Makes me nervous. God said, I need you to have an open hand. I know you've been going through something. Don't you dare give up on God. The point of being who you are is that you are major league. He knew when the season began you were going to win. He knew, though, he had to put you in a situation where it looked like you were going to lose. Just to show you I'm God and I can bring you out of any situation. But I got to put you in pressure. Look at your neighbor and say, I can stand a little pressure. Turn to the other side and say, I've been pressurized to survive. Have a seat. We almost done. You have been put under pressure. So that you will know who you are. 
See, there are people right now saying, God, what do you want me to do? God, what is my purpose? What's my destiny? What do you, what is it? And God's saying, what I tell you before. See, God will tell us again, but then when he gets quiet, ever had a time where it's like the heaven shuts off? Anybody ever had that happen to you? It was like at one moment, you getting all your answers, and you're like, oh, I'm on speed dial. I'm on speed dial. Some of y'all older, older, older members got a beeper. You know what I'm saying? It's just, <laughs> people don't even know what that is today. Watch this. God has to let you know that if you don't go through something, you won't know what's in you. Right now, there are some of us in the room that got too many air pockets in our heart, meaning it ain't full yet. See, when you bake a cake, anybody in here ever baked? What happens when you pull that cake out too soon? Psst. Why? Because it was supposed to heat up until all those empty pockets are filled with bread. The word of God. There are too many empty pockets in our spirit, man. We, we got to fill it up with the bread of life. We got we to gotta start back on the word. We got to start saying, God, I'm going to start reading like I never had before. And when you fill those pockets, when you come out of that heat, that cake won't sink. So many people, when the heat gets on, they jump out of the oven. And they trying to serve that to somebody. No, sir. What am I saying to you? You were pressurized to survive. I'm going to end here. and I'm going to pick up on some, some very important things you're going to need to know next week. But I want you to understand, God called you to this team. And every one of you have something to offer. I want you to give yourself a name. Tell God, here's my name. I'm super successful. I am a man of God, a woman of God. I am strong. I am a survivor. I will come out. Because the team you on ain't a losing team. It ain't a losing team. We'll close with what Paul, Peter says. He says this, 1 Peter 5. He says, listen to me. God opposes the proud, but gives grace to the humble. So humble yourselves under the mighty hand of God. And at the right time, he will lift you in honor. Give your worries and cares to God, for he cares for you. Stay alert. Watch out for your great enemy, the devil. Prowls like a roaring lion, looking for somebody who gave up. Stand firm against him. Be strong in your faith. Remember that people like you all over the world are going through the same kind of sufferings. In his kindness, God has called you to share in his glory. So after, listen to me, so after you have suffered a little while, he will restore. He will support you. And he will strengthen you and he will place you on a firm foundation some of your seasons are coming you just couldn't quit you didn't give up you couldn't you couldn't do it 
because you're right at your breakthrough point. You're about to win if you don't stop at second base or third base. It's just the nature of the world we fight with are fighting spirits. But you are destined to win. You are more than conquerors in Christ. Would you stand to your feet, please? Every time I see that boy, I go, Major League! And he goes into that stance. I was so proud of that team. We made a name for ourselves. Because my father taught me how to see people. People don't know what's in you. So don't let people try to tell you what you're not. Only God knows. And I need you to take the quit button out of your life. I need you to tear off the run button and throw it away. I need you to take the piece of tape that says, I'll just take a break for a while and tear it off of your life. I need you to say to God, I'm all in. I'm all in. Through hell or high water, you're with me. You'll never leave me nor forsake me. I'm all in. I need that, God. I can't live without you. You're my breath. You're my life. You're the only reason why I get up in the morning. And when I don't feel like getting up, you're the one that stirs me to get up. So if you stop that, God, I'll have nothing. I need you. I can't have people around me that are doubters and always complainers because it kills my faith. God, I need to hold on to my faith and hold on to you because you will never leave me. And today, some of you, I'm calling you back into the game. You thought you were benched. You thought you were off the team. God was just waiting for you to see that if he can do it, you can do it. Get back in the game. Come to church like you're supposed to. Hear the full counsel of God. Quit delaying your growth. Plug in. Learn about Catalyst Life. Get your discovery under your belt. And then go serve. Serve somebody. And watch what God gives to you in your every day. The favor. All in, baby. Can I have all my men say, I'm all in. Come on, say it again. I'm all in. All women need us to be all in. We, we don't need to be the, the ones say, take them to church. I'll see you later. No, we need to be at church before they wake up. We can be there and be a greeter at the door for them. The men need to come home. The men need to be major league. No more putting it on the women's shoulders. They are the rib. They weren't made to bear the weight the full man was. I need you to stand in your place. I need you to come home. I need you to sit under the counsel of God. If you don't know him, know him. Learn him. Grow. You'll be among a whole lot of us. But I need you to step up. Be all in. We can't go to the championship without you. And women... This generation needs women who can pray. That can pray for the men. Speak life over them, not death. Enough of what we see on TV. We've been taught wrong. You're going to get your teach teaching from somewhere. Music or television or church. Choose. 
Women, we need you. Because a man ain't always going to be there. But you can still stand with Christ and lead him back. Today, if you're here in this building, this message spoke to you. Some of you never accepted Jesus Christ into your life. So it's like you keep striking out. And God says, if you let me in, I'll teach you to win. If you've never accepted Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior, I'm going to count to three and say, raise your hand. And if that's you and it's really stirring on your heart, raise your hand and say, I want to be saved. I want to be born again. One, two, three. Lift your hands in the air. Is there one? Is there one? I better put my glasses on. Is there one? Listen to me. If you're here today and you, you're trying out church, let me say to you, don't do that. God brought you here for a purpose. God knows what you need. We believe in training and teaching people in the full counsel of God. If you're looking for a church home, I want to invite you to be part of this movement we got. It's called Frontier Church. And you ain't seen nothing yet, baby. You ain't seen nothing. I promise you. It will blow your mind by the time we, we get on this journey good. But I'm going to invite you to come and walk with me to build the kingdom of heaven. If that's you and you're looking for a church home, I'm going to ask that right now you would raise your hands and say, I want to join Frontier Church. Is there one? Is there one? Is there one? Amen. Here's what we're going to do. I want you to look at somebody in the eye. Turn to the left or right. Pick one. <laughs> Y'all just confused. <laughs> I said left or right. I didn't say left and right. And I want you to look at them and I want you to say these words. You are major league to God. You cannot lose. And you're coming home. Come on, let's give God a great hand clap of praise. <laughs>